Okay, this is your simple, basic, permanent horseshoe magnet. Now the ends of this thing are magnetic. Both ends are magnetic. The center, really not, buried just a little bit. So there's no real magnetism here. There's a north pole and a south pole. I don't know which is which, but the strongest magnetic pole is here. Now we're going to look at these lines of force that are involved with these permanent magnets. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and cover that magnet up. We've got the north and south poles pointing up now. Cover up the piece of paper. And I'm going to shake some iron filings on it. Okay. Now if you look at this, this illustrates lines of force better than anything else I can come up with. Uh, you should have seen this when you were in grade school, although I guess some of the teachers are not showing it anymore. But let's look close and we can see a couple of things here that are important. Okay, you see the two square parts of the magnet that we're showing up here and here. The rest of this, all these lines around here, all these lines moving about here, not really moving, they're just steady, these are lines of force. And these iron filings have followed those lines of force. You can see them coming way out here. If I had some here, you'd see them there. See, they're coming way out like this, and they're very intense right close between these two, because those are only you know, maybe a quarter inch apart or something. So you can actually see these lines of force with these metal filings, because they're going to line up with the lines of magnetic force. Now, why do we care? Because a magnetic line of force, if a wire is passed through a magnetic line of force it will induce power that means it will make power in the wire the wire does not have to touch anything does not have to be in contact with anything all it has to do is pass through that field now if it passed through the field way out here it probably wouldn't produce much power but if it passed through in here where the uh, real intense lines of force are, then it would induce more power. The closer it is, the more power is induced into the wire. And we're going to test this. this. Okay, here we are with fun with magnets and wires. Okay, I showed you how the magnet works. Now let's take a look at this meter. This meter is set for DC volts. It'll read a thousandth of a volt. And I'm going to take this little coil right here. Now this is just a coil of wire that's hooked up to the probes from the meter. And I'm going to run it across this magnet. Now you can see that occasionally I'll get a reading. Now it's only when it's moving. Now I can also put this in micro amps. A little funny U down there is the micro. And because we're having both amperage and voltage going through this thing. So. 
and I'm getting little bits of it through there. Not when it sits. When it sits, it's not going to do much of anything. Now, if I get a reading there, it's because this thing's moving around. Now, I've got it steady. It pretty much stays off. But every time I move it, I get a reading. Okay. Now, if I ran a single wire across there, it would do the same thing. This is about five or six windings. Here's one that's got like 20 windings. Let's try this one. Okay, now what this is going to do, this is going to increase the number of times that the wire has, has crossed a magnetic field. And so every time this moves, instead of inducing power uh, a very small amount of power, it will tend to induce more power because there's more windings. Okay. Now you can see it's quite a bit higher. We get twos, fours. Now that's in microamps. Set it to DC volts. And we're getting a reading there too. It's like we got a two. You have to move it fairly fast across there. Now you can see what happened here. I produced power by taking these windings and crossing the lines of force. Every time I do that, I get power induced. Notice there is no electrical connection between the magnet and the meter. The meter is, I'm calling the meter my load at this point. So, this is how electromagnetism works. This is how we use it to uh, change voltages, to power coils, and so on. Now, this, this works the same whether I'm moving this coil or I've made an electromagnet out of this and I've got AC going through it. Now AC is going to go high voltage zero, low voltage opposite side. High voltage zero, low voltage opposite side. It's a wave. So if this, if this was an electromagnet and it built power, the lines of force would cross the wires and the wires didn't move. It doesn't make any difference whether the wires move or the field moves. But if this was an electromagnet hooked to AC, it would build up those lines of force, drop them down, build them up, drop them down, build them up, drop them down, and they would cross these wires and they would induce power in the same way this induced power. Another way I can demonstrate this Okay, now here we're going to use an AC clamp meter to demonstrate this same thing. Uh, when I pass a wire through here with AC uh, amperage going through it, it induces power into the clamp. And we're going to do that with a permanent magnet. I'm going to use a little bit bigger magnet on this one because it's a little more powerful. But you can see that you can actually get the reading. Actually, getting an amp, huh? Two amps there. Okay. If you can understand that, this I'm moving the magnet in this case to induce the power into these jaws. If you look inside these jaws they got a little metal uh, clamp there that they touch together. And these are very sensitive to amperage. So when I do that it's 
this magnet is moving, of course, it's a permanent magnet. I can do this with an electromagnet just as well as I can do it with a permanent magnet. It's just easier to, do, to demonstrate with a permanent magnet. Um, but that is inducing power. Okay, when I induce power by using these magnets or an electromagnet or whatever I'm using uh, to induce power, I induce both voltage and amperage. The more windings I put in, if you saw this one that had the small amount of windings, and then you saw this other one that had more windings, and it actually induced a power in the wire. The increased number of windings should increase voltage and the intensity of the uh, magnetic field should increase amperage. I hope this is understandable. I'll move on with uh, a little more on AC next video.